There is real and important new hope for the tens of thousands of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans with PTSD, the so-called non-visible wounds of war. And it comes from, of all places, the club and party scene in New York and Miami. The club drug, MDMA, otherwise known as ecstasy, shows real promise in rewiring the brain back to normal. Partiers like it because it gives you a feeling of euphoria and sociability. The same feelings that club goers enjoy have other names in therapy, trust and closeness. So taking ecstasy before therapy sessions makes them far more effective. It's part of a growing trend of trying otherwise illegal drugs in therapy. For example, using ketamine, a date rape drug, to treat depression and anxiety. Dr. Liberty Vitter, professor of data science at Washington University in St. Louis, features editor of the Harvard Data Science Review. My favorite sister joins us now. Is this just some professors who want an excuse to be able to try illegal drugs legally, or is this a real thing? This is years and years of cutting edge research that has not been shown because people are too afraid of talking about illegal or morally bad drugs that really is now coming to the forefront because it is so helpful and so important, especially for our veterans, that people are now willing to come out and speak about how important and how useful they actually are. There was one of these studies where two-thirds of the people no longer had PTSD two months after treatment. So who, who are doing these studies and how did it come that now all of a sudden people are willing to talk about this? It began to be picked up by major institutions that could no longer be ignored. Sometimes who had been denied funding multiple times by the U.S. government and by the NSF, who are now able to fund them themselves, to find individual private donors to fund them, to do this type of research. Um, it's not just ecstasy. It's ketamine, as you said, which was a horse tranquilizer or a date rape drug. Um, it's psychedelics um, that have just shown incredible promise in helping people not just with things as extreme as PTSD, but depression and anxiety, without the really bad side effects mm. of a lot of the drugs that people currently take and are not addictive in the same way that something like Xanax is for a lot of people. Yeah, you have to wonder how much the big drug companies like this or don't like this, because all of a sudden now all the big antidepressants and everything else that they've sold, uh, there's a really cheap uh, alternative to it. Uh, where does this go from here? Back in the 1910s, any drug that's now illegal is, was legalized. You could, buy, you could buy heroin at the pharmacy. You could be prescribed cocaine. Do we believe that at some point you're going to be able to get a prescription for ecstasy? I think these things are coming. You know, the first drug law was in 1875 against opium because for women, not men, but for women, it was morally ruinous for them to be in opium dens. And then we really didn't have big laws against drugs until 1971 with Nixon, with the war on drugs, which a lot of people feel was really because he couldn't make being black or being anti-war illegal. So he turned the American public against people and against and made it much worse for minorities and incarcerated people because of these drugs. So, you know, I think it's really questionable where we're going to go from here, but I think the one thing that we know is that these drugs are going to be starting to get in the hands of people who really need them through the medical community first. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see whether the drug companies get on board with this or whether they try to fight, fight it throughout. Um, there is this huge amount of money, though, to be made on both sides. The, the, the prison industry in America makes a huge amount of money, how many people are locked up. And on the flip side, uh, marijuana, first thing to be legalized. California now bringing in a billion two in tax revenue. Uh, Colorado, where I used to live, about 400 million uh, in tax revenue. Would it be safer to be able to buy heroin in your local pharmacy if you could guarantee the quality of it and then tax it? I think this is the perfect argument for the fact that we're giving billions of dollars to foreign drug dealers when we could be giving these dollars to American taxpayers. You know, you take um, you take the illicit drug trade. That's $50 billion at least in tax revenue. You could end homelessness. You could give $100,000 to 500,000 small businesses. I mean, there's enormous of things, amounts of things you could do with this tax revenue. As you said, California alone, $1.2 billion last year just with marijuana. Think about everything else and our prison systems. 
20% of offenders are there for drug-related offenses. That's about, um, I mean, that's 200,000 people. So you have 200,000 people at $70,000 a year of taxpayer money to incarcerate them. That's another $15 billion that we've just so saved the, the flip American side, The flip side of this is the opioid crisis is real. Uh, there's people, especially in West Virginia, where you are now, who it's the leading cause of death, overdose is now. How does legalizing in some way ecstasy, which you can have a very bad experience with, ketamine you can have a very bad experience with, and certainly re-legalizing opiates, I can't understand how that doesn't lead to a lot more death. The deaths aren't coming from well-made drugs. They're coming when things are laced. So the leading cause of death of 18 to 45-year-olds in America is illegal fentanyl because people don't know how much to take. It's cut with different things. There's different amounts in it. There's a reason we have the FDA hmm. uh, to go over pills. That is what's causing the deaths, not drugs that are properly uh, set out, properly organized by the FDA. Fascinating. Liberty, thank you very much. Really incredible. Uh, news and great hope for some people who need it. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.